Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Rob's World of Boxing. Let's get it. Alright. Today it's another top 10 video. But we're gonna do um my top 10 blue chip prospects. My can't miss prospects in boxing today. Well, my closest to can't mix, miss prospects in box, boxing today. Because you know shit. In life, nothing's guaranteed. Everything can miss. But yeah. My top 10 blue chip prospects in boxing today. At number 10. I got Kelvin Davis. He's 3-0 with two KOs. He's 25 years of age. He's a southpaw. He stands at six foot one with a 74-inch reach. He's from Norfolk, Virginia. Um, his last fight was a second round corner stoppage win versus Ryan Schwarzberg, who was 1-3-1. Oh my Jesus. Um 12-11, 2021. Um I don't think Kelvin ever went to the Olympics like his brother, um, Keyshawn. Um, yeah, man, Kelvin's kind of up there, too. I didn't know he was 25 years of age. They kind of need to fast track his career, unlike his brother. But, um, yeah, man, at my number 10 spot, well, tied for my number 10 spot because uh, I couldn't decide between um, Kelvin and um, my, my other number 10 guy, so I, I just, you know, I locked it, tied it up right there at number 10. But, yeah, my number 10 spot, I got Kelvin Davis. Also at my number 10 spot, Bruce Shushu Carrington. Bruce, he's 2-0 with one KO, 24 years of age. He's an orthodox-style fighter. He's five foot eight with a 72-inch reach. He's from Westbury, New York. Um, Shit, I never, you know, I'm from the West Coast. I never heard of Westbury. Um. Uh, but I'm not from the East Coast, so yeah. Uh, if you're from West Westbury, throw it in the comments. If you heard of Westbury, throw it in the comments. Um, his last fight was a second round KO win versus Steve Stephen Stephen Brown, who was one and zero. That fight transpired uh, January of this year, 2022. But yeah, I was watching that fight actually with him with Steve Brown, and um, that's what put me on the um, shoo shoo. He um, he looks good in there, man. He got the fast twitches, man. He's a he's a defensive fighter. Um, yeah, man, I really like Bruce Shoo Shoo Carrington, so he's in my number ten spot. Um, top ten on the top ten blue chip prospects in the world today. Number ten. Bruce Shushu Carrington. At number nine, I got Troy Isley. He's 4 0 with two KOs, 23 years of age. He stands at 5 foot 10 with a 69 and a half inch reach from Washington, D.C., but he's standing in Virginia. Um, his last fight was the unanimous decision win versus Harry Cabano, who was 6 and 2. That fight transpired um, January 15, 2022. Um, Troy Isley was a 2020. Olympian. He was a 2020 Tokyo Olympian. Um, Troy, he's a um, he's a very aggressive fighter. Um, as you, uh, well, he's only, he only got two knockouts, but you know that's no indication of his aggression. He's a, he's very aggressive in there, but uh, at the same time, he's very tactical. So, uh, I really like Troy Osley. Uh, I, uh, he got potential. So all these guys on here got potential, man. They, like I said, they, they they're all can't miss, man. But uh, yeah, man, I I really like Troy Isley, man. So on my number nine spot, I got Troy Isley. At number eight, I got Richardson Hitches. He's um thirteen and zero with five KOs. He's twenty four years of age. He stands at five foot ten with a seventy four inch reach He's from Brooklyn, New York. Um, his last fight was a unanimous decision win versus Malik Hawkins. Um, 12, 18, 2021 Hitchens is a 2016 Olympian from Haiti. He's, um, I guess he's come from Haitian descent. So he was able to qualify for the Haitian 
Olympics team, even though he's from Brooklyn. Uh, Hitchens, Hitchens, he's um he's been on my radar for a while now, but um he hasn't been moving at the at the pace that I feel like he should. You know, I don't. He's not where he at. He's not where I feel like he should be at right now in his career. He's been um. I don't know, man. I guess they they they're they're not matchmaking him right. If you ask me, I don't know. Maybe they seen something in training camp that I didn't see, and you know, in the ring. But I feel like he's ready. You know, for he's been ready for step up fights, and they just now really start. You know, uh, matching him with with fighters who you know who can test him. So I want to see more out of Richardson Hitchens. That's the only reason he's so low on my list, and he has. Uh, 13 fights already. I just want to see more out of him. Uh, but yeah, uh, nonetheless, man, he has loads of potential, man. And my number eight spot, I got Richardson Hitchens. At number seven, I got David Morrell Jr. He's 6-0 and with five KOs. He's 24 years of age. He's a South boy since at six foot one. He has a 78 and a half inch reach from, he's from Cuba, but he's living in Minneapolis, Minnesota at the time. Uh, well, right now, his last fight was a fourth round TKO versus Alanis Fox, who was 28 and two on one draw um, in December of 2021. Um, Alanis Fox, he um, he's a savvy veteran at, um, at the weight. I think they're at 160, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, no, 168. They're at 168, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, yeah, he's a, um, he's nice at that weight. And, um, he's, he actually gave, um, Demetrius Andre to run for his money. Um, uh, they, I think Demetrius beat him in the unanimous decision. So, my fault, my mistake, my mistake. So, it is at 160. Demetrius beat him at 160. Um, so, uh, yeah, man, he went up and made easy work of um, Atlantis Fox after, you know, Demetrius fought to a unanimous decision with him. So uh, that put him on the radar, man. In, in, in your fifth fight, you do uh, Fox the way you did Fox, and Fox had 30 fights, man. So, yeah, man, uh, David Morrell Jr., he's a problem, man. He He's very aggressive. He's, uh, he's going in there trying to knock out his opponent every time. Uh, he's explosive as hell. And he's in my number seven spot, David Morrell Jr. At number six, I got Keyshawn Davis. He's 4-0 with three KOs, 23 years of age. He stands at five foot nine with a 70-inch reach. He's from Norfolk, Virginia, as his, just like his brother, who's number 10 on my list. Um, his last fight was a second-round TKO win versus Jose Sagarza, who was 8-3 with one draw, um, December of 21, uh, the same night his brother fought, uh, and Keyshawn is a 2020 U.S. Olympian, uh, he was a 2020 standout U.S. Olympian, excuse me, um, but Keyshawn Davis, man, what can I say about Keyshawn Davis, he's a fucking, he's the truth. He has uh, four fights, man, but I'm a believer. What I think he's at 135. I am a fucking believer. He um he he finished off his last opponent with a uh, a liver shot. Um, and he set him up for it, man. He set him up. He he knocked people out to the head, to the body. He's um he's going to the body effectively. You know, early on in his career, he's not getting hit. He's um. He's the future, man. He's the future at the weight. Only reason I have him so low on the list is because he's he only has four fights. But if he have only, only thing he needs is uh, experience, man. And he's gonna he's gonna go up. The sky's the limit for Keyshawn Davis. He might be the face of the box, the face of boxing in the future. Any any one of these guys might be the all of these guys shit can be the face of boxing in the future. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, man, I got a lot of faith in Keyshawn Davis, man. And he's in my number six spot. And at number five, I got Xander Zayas. Xander Zayas, he's 12 and 0 with nine KOs. He's he, ooh, he only 19. He's a young man. He's an Orthodox style fighter. He's 5'10 with a 74 inch reach. He's from Puerto Rico, but he's standing in Florida. Um, his last fight was a six round uh, TKO win versus um, some nigga with a hard ass name who I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. 
Um, yeah, it's a it's a Hispanic last name. Um, he was nine and one. That fight transpired December twenty one. Um, Xander's eyes, man. <laughs> Everything I just said about Keyshawn, what I just said about Keyshawn Davis, how he could be the face of boxing, there, all right? Man, I, that that goes for Xander's eyes too, man. Xander's eyes, he's he's one of my favorite fighters in boxing right now, man. He's um he's a colorful uh well he's a well spoken young man, but he he has um you know he has a colorful personality and um he has skills to match, man. He has skills to back it up. I really really like Xander's eyes. I like the way he carries himself inside and outside the ring. Inside the ring, he's very powerful. He um. I don't see any weaknesses in his game. I don't see, you know, um, there's always things young, young fighters need to work on, but there's no glaring weaknesses in Xander Zayas' game, as I see in, in Keyshawn Davis's. Uh, these are my, I'm not going to lie, if they had, if they were, you know, had a little bit more experience under their belt, they might be higher up on the list, man. They're my two favorite young fighters on this list. I'm not going to lie to you. Keyshawn Davis and Xander Zayas. They're both the fucking truth, man. But yeah, man. Xander Zayas, my number five prospect in the world today. At number four, I got Charles Conwell. He's 16 and 0 with 12 KOs, 24 years of age. He's an Orthodox style fighter. He's five foot nine with a 70 inch reach. He's from um Charles Conwell. He's from um damn what the, I put where he's from. I didn't put where he's from. I, don't, I think he's from Ohio, though. I'm not. How the fuck I missed that? Not for uh, Charles. But uh, his last fight was a third round TKO versus Juan Carlos Rubio, who was. Um, that fight transpired. I, I didn't put down his record either. I'm sorry about this, guys. Um, but that fight transpired August 29, 2021. Um, Conwell was a 2016 Olympian in Rio. Um, Damn, man, I thought I had uh, wrote, wrote down where Conway was from and his opponent's record, man. But uh, I guess I didn't. Um, but, um, yeah, man, Charles Conway, he's nice. Um, his 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 career has been kind of, uh, he kind of took a little time off. Uh, a guy actually died from sustain, from injury sustained, you know, in a, you know, in a fight fighting Charles. Um, his name was Patrick Day. He actually uh, knocked out Day. Well, knock you know, knock yeah, knock him out, and his head like slammed into the canvas pretty hard. And I guess I don't know what caused the death, but uh, yeah, man, he went to the hospital and he didn't make it. Um, so I think that probably had like a big effect on Charles' psyche and his um, you know, just you know, well, I'm not even gonna say that having a man die from. You know, injuries sustained in a fight against you has, you know, to have some kind of effect on you, you know, as a human being. So I think that's what Charles was at. But he came back and he riddled off a couple wins since then. And now he's, um, um, you know, he's back at it, man. But yeah, my number four spot, Charles Conwell. At number three, I got Jared Big Baby Anderson. He's 11 and 0 with 11 KOs. 22 years of age. He's an Orthodox style fighter. He's six foot four with a 78 and a half inch reach from Toledo, Ohio. Uh, his last fight was a second round TKO win versus Alexander Teleskin. Telesco. He was um 17 and one Telesco. Um, Big Baby Anderson. Like as I stated, he's 11 and 0 with 11 KOs. Man, he's a powerful young man. Big as hell. Um. Well, at the heavyweight weight, he's he's kind of average, but um, I feel like he can hold his weight. He has the skills to match. He might be the heavyweight we we've been waiting on, you know, in America, you know, to um, unify those heavyweight champions championship belts, and um, uh, you know, knock off some of these um, uh, these bigger guys from other countries. But uh, I have a lot of faith in Jared Big Baby Anderson, and uh. Let's see what the future holds for him. My number three spot, Jerry Big Baby Anderson. At number two, I got Gary Antoine Russell. He's 15 and 0 with 15 KOs. He's 25 years of age. He's a southpaw. He stands at five, five foot ten with a 69 inch reach. He's from Capitol Heights, 
Maryland. His last fight was a 10th round TKO versus Victor Postal, who was a, who was a savvy vet at 140 pounds. Uh, Postal was 31 and 3 at the time. And um, Gary Antoine Russell is a 2016 Olympian. Um, what I need, what do I need to say about Gary Antoine Russell that hasn't been said? Um, he comes from a, a you know, a, a lineage of boxers. His whole family, goddamn shit, probably are, is boxers. Uh, his dad, his coach, um, his, you know, his brother Gary Russell Jr. He's a um, he's a champion boxer. His other his other brother um, Gary Antonio Russell. He's a boxer. And um, Gary Antoine Russell, he's a, they all boxers, man. They all boxers, and they're all hell of a boxers. Uh, I I think uh, Gary Antoine might be the best, though. And that's saying something, because they're all fucking amazing. But Gary Antoine might be the best. As I stated in this record, he's 15-0 and 0 with 15 KOs, knocking out everybody he's fought. Uh, man, he's the fucking truth, man. He really showed me something against Victor Postal. He... Uh, you know, as I stated previously, Victor, he has fought everybody at the weight. He's a um, competitor at 140 pounds, a tough competitor at 140 pounds. And um, he was making it hard for Gary Antoine to get in in that fight. I watched that fight, but Gary eventually got in, and he um, he made good work when he got in. And he um, disposed of Victor Postal in the 10th round, and he's on my number two list. Um, he's, and he, he's number two on my list for it. At number two. Gary Antoine Russell. At number one, I got Brandon Lee. He's 24 and 0 with 22 KOs, 22 years of age. He's an Orthodox style fighter. He stands at five foot ten with a 71 inch reach. He's from La Quinta, California. I'm from La I'm from California, and I never heard of La Quinta. Where the fuck is that? But yeah, um. His last fight was a seventh round TKO win versus Juan Haraldez, who was 16 and 1 with one draw at the time of their fight. Um, December 11, 2021. Um, yeah, man, Brandon Lee, he's a fucking truth, man. Um, when I first seen this guy, I didn't think he he could fight. He's a he's an agent. Um, and he, he doesn't he looked very unassuming in there. And I was that's why you never judge a book by his cover. But I, yeah, I thought he was going to get the brakes beat off of him. He went in there and beat the hell out of some people uh, with that person. And he's been beating the hell out of everybody else. I, you know, I've seen him fight, fight since. And, um, man, I really I really like Brandon Lee, man. I really like Brandon Lee. He was named after Bruce Lee. That's a fun fact about Brandon Lee. And uh, another fun fact, he the fucking truth. And, uh, yeah, man, look out for Brandon Lee, man. But, yeah, man, my number one spot, man, my top blue chip, in boxing, my my can't miss prospects in boxing today. My number one can't miss prospect in boxing today, Brandon Lee. And uh, let's do a quick recap. My number two, Gary Antoine Russell. My number three can't miss prospect in boxing today, Jared Big Baby Anderson. At number four, I got Charles Conway. At number five, I got Xander Zayas. At number six, Keyshawn Davis. At number seven, I got David Morrell Jr. At number eight, Richardson Hitchens. At number nine, I got Troy Isley. And my number, oh, no, hold on, I'm tripping. And tied for number 10, I got two number 10s. I got Kelvin Davis. Um, and then I got Bruce Shushu Carrington. Also in my number 10 spot for my top blue chips and Boxing today, my best, I mean, my my top 10 can't miss prospects in boxing today. That was the list. Like, comment, subscribe, all that shit, people. Rob's World of Boxing. Yeah.